Yeah, welcome to another episode of the Racer X Exhaust Podcast. I'm Jason Wygant. Hey, just a quick shout out. We're going to Arlington, Texas this weekend. Check us out at the Look Theater Friday night. If you're going to Arlington, come watch us. We'll do a live show, bench race, take audience questions. It'll be myself, Steve Mathis, Jason Thomas, all the hijinks from the Pulp MX show. We'll have some guests. I know Will Hahn's going to come over. We'll try to find a rider or two who's not too busy on Friday night uh, to come chat with us. We had a lot of fun at our Minneapolis show the past Friday. Uh, there are still tickets available. Just look on the racerxonline.com site in the breaking news section. You'll see a link or go to Mathis's grubby pulpamex.com site and you'll see a link to buy tickets there. It's the Look Theater, 7 p.m. Friday night, 7 to 9. We'll do a two-hour show and uh, take questions and joke around with you folks. If you're going to Arlington, come watch us. Also want to thank the shout out, of course, to our sponsors, including Yoshimura. Got the Yoshimura RS12 exhaust system looking good. So close to winning both main events of Monster Energy AMA Supercross in Minneapolis. Jet Lawrence won with his Yoshimura Shad Honda in the 250 Supercross East opener. Oh, Chase Sexton could have, should have, would have won, but he crashed with two minutes to go. And now Jason Anderson has back-to-back -back wins on his Monster Energy Kawasaki. But the exhaust systems, they were good. Go to Yoshimura hyphen rd.com get an exhaust not just for hondas but also available for kawasaki's and suzuki's and yamaha's gas gas ktm husqvarna they've got great stuff for street bikes as well yoshimira hyphen rd.com also this podcast sponsored by on track school the k-12 distance learning school for students who are on the go chase your dreams blaze your trails with nothing holding you back and there are no limits to what you can do when the classroom is wherever you make it on track school meets you where you are with a flexible personalized education that happens at your own pace pursue your dreams and your education at the same time with on track so after this episode head over to ontrackschool.com enter our code which is rx22 and they'll give you 100 dollars off your registration fee this is not homeschooling this is not mom or dad trying to teach you whatever they think they barely remember they know on track school is actual school it's just done virtually Go to ontrackschool.com. Also, big thanks to Liat for jumping on board with this podcast this year. Different people ride for different reasons, yet there is a common denominator that binds everyone who puts their body on the line for the sheer enjoyment of it. And this is what Liat offers as a brand. They make protective wear, helmets, goggles, riding gear, knee braces, boots, and neck braces, covering riders from head to toe for both moto and mountain bike. But what Liat really stands for is the promise of things to come. They are in the business of making sure that you have the confidence in the equipment to push yourself faster, harder, and further than you thought you could go. Visit them at leat.com, L-E-A-T-T.com. Those are our sponsors. Now let's chat again with Ryan Dungy. And we're back with Ryan Dungy. Got RD Coffee ready here on a Monday morning. But you were at the race. We actually saw each other at the race. You got to go to a Supercross, and you had a lot going on. Probably a fun weekend, but probably pretty busy also. Yeah, it was pretty busy, but uh, I got to say, it was fun to be back at the race. It's my first one this year, so worked out. It was really close to the house. Um, yeah, good to see everybody. So, yeah, let's first start with uh, Friday. We had uh, They told me, hey, there's going to be a press conference. Uh, so I thought, hey, we're going to have a press conference. You're going to talk St. Jude. You're going to talk all kids' bike. No, you put us to work. You put us to work building bicycles. It was cool. It was. A uh, lot of bikes, about 50 of them, but it was pretty cool. I At first, I think we expected, like, I don't know, 10 people to be there. And then um, the day of Lauren was telling me how many people were going to be there. So it was pretty cool to see everybody rally behind it. And we built the bikes pretty quick. I think it mattered in 10, 15 minutes, but it was pretty sweet. Yes. We built 45 bikes in like 15 minutes. Uh, okay. We already know long-term you've, you've been involved with St. Jude's for a while, but real quick, just say how much money you were able to put together already with this uh, foundation you started last year is pretty impressive. Yeah, no, it's, it's got off to a good start. I mean, we launched it in June of last year. Um, and right away we got some good momentum, had a ride day out in California, one in here in Minnesota, got a lot of good partners. I mean, Fox, KTM, uh, Strider, a couple of local here, Express, uh, Cutsler Express and North American trailers. So, uh, and then even the fundraising aspect, I mean, a lot of the people getting behind this, the donors, and we were able to write our first check to St. Jude for, for 60 grand, which was yeah, pretty amazing. And then we were actually able to open up, um, put five all kids bike programs uh, in schools across the country, uh, which those are about $5,000 a piece to do. Um, so, but it's cool. I, I didn't expect the momentum to gain this quickly, but uh, I'm, I'm pumped. Uh, we're accomplishing the mission that we created out to, for it to do. And 
creating opportunities for these kids. So it's been fun. It's cool to see the community and uh, the whole industry get behind it as well. And the support from Supercross and, and you, Weege, being there building bikes with us. So it was, it was cool. It was a fun weekend just to, to, you know, just to see the benefits of it all. Yeah. So uh, real quick, we'll talk this all kids bike thing, which is really you kind of giving back. So we all think I, I had some startling stats that you threw out there. We all think because of Striders and Stasis and this boom we have with the pandemic that more kids are riding than ever. That's just our little group, our little industry enthusiast group. But yep. you were spouting out stats. I think 35 percent fewer kids ride bicycles than just 10 years ago. So you're trying to get more kids to ride bikes, which obviously is going to help the motorcycle world down the road, too. I had no idea it had fallen that far. Oh, it's incredible. And actually, Ryan McFarlane from from All Kids Bike, who founded it, he was telling me these stats back in um, March of last year and how, yeah. I mean, it was like 60, 50 to 60 percent of kids who won't actually get introduced to a, a bicycle. So it was like kind of mind blowing. You think for me and you were like, well, we're in the two wheel space. So it's like, yeah. who, who wouldn't get a bicycle? Who wouldn't get the chance? But kind of in these kind of uh, the less privileged kids in these neighborhoods, you know, um, just kind of run down, just won't be introduced to it. So um, it's kind of a sad thing, but trying to change that, get these kids at that opportunity. And I mean, whether they want to take it to a, you know, to be, try to be a professional racer or just the freedom of getting outside and being healthy, you know, getting off the, the computers, the devices and hanging with your friends and whatnot. So a lot of good. It's I really, when we were looking for other organizations to support outside of St. Jude, that that one kind of just naturally came across our path and it was an easy choice. It was like, man, this is this is exactly because I knew I wanted to invest in the two wheel space. I just don't know what organization, but that was an easy. It was an easy, uh, easy choice. Yeah. Yeah. So we ended up uh, getting 45 bikes built and then you literally brought them to school two schools that day on Friday yeah. afternoon before the race. We did. We did. We had two schools here in St. Paul um, that we dropped them off at and uh, the kids were pretty, pretty pumped. We got some pictures and whatnot and they were they were all hyper. It was pretty 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 uh, cool to see yeah yeah and thanks for strider obviously for helping out there with the bicycles yeah. so who knows the seeds you're planting here where it'll go although I, I do want to ask dude the weather i don't know how you're dealing with this and i heard it was colder like a couple of days ago this is not bicycle weather right now in minnesota dude you guys have just gotten soft on me oh man. okay <laughs> no, no, i gotta it's... give you credit for hanging in there you live florida and california for like 10 winters but you're not going back like i'm impressed you're sticking with it we might be looking at other locations at this time. <laughs> okay, okay. No, but it, it does get cold. The winters, that's the, 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 you know, the four seasons is awesome. The winters get a little bit long, right? But um, yeah, yeah, it's just part of it, but makes you appreciate the good seasons. That's for sure. The warmer, the warmer months. So That's what I was thinking. I'm like, man, they must love summertime. <laughs> oh, here. summer here, like you can't <laughs> eat summer here. It's like, you know, just... But it's only three months out of the year. Oh, right? so. Uh So you got to watch a race in person. Obviously, the top story has to be Chase Sexton. Um, I, I don't remember the last time I've seen something like that. Both a guy's going to win and, and throws it away with two minutes to go. And then that kind of damage to a motorcycle. I can't remember the last time I've seen either of those. Uh, you have any take on that? That was just shocking what happened. You know, I... Uh... I saw the picture yesterday. I didn't know his front wheel was that badly warped. I didn't, yep. uh, I just saw that yesterday, but you know, as a rider, when, when you're watching that race and you're like, okay, you're, you know, three laps to go, two laps to go. And you're like, just, just stay in the moment. Just don't know mistakes. And, and, you know, I don't think he was riding so good. He was, he rode good all day. Won his heat dang there led the whole main event. And you know, it, it happens to the best of the best, you know, it's just one of those things. It, it was a tough situation. I think, I even thought about it, even for him to try to back out of it and hit the brakes. It, it was such a, such a small split second of like having to really, you know, to regain control of the dirt bike it, you know, even if he let off the gas, he, he still probably would have tipped her over, but the way he flew off the bike, I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, but I think for him, it, uh, it's a tough break, right? You're just like this close from capturing another win. You led the whole main event thing there. And so, tough blow it was tough i think it reminds everybody of how much you guys are pushing right like he has a lead but it's not really gigantic it's a few seconds so he's he can't ride at 80 percent. so that's how much you guys are on the edge of rear wheel traction front wheel traction all the way around the track even when you're maybe backing it down a tight bit you're still sliding to a degree oh yeah yeah you're pushing the edges and um the whole race and 
And not to mention that the, the conditions sometimes make it a little bit harder. That that the way the track developed from press day to the main event, I mean, you were there on press, right? And how tacky and yeah. rutted and soft it was, and then all the heat in the stadium, it dried dried the track out. And by the time the main event came around, that track was really there was parts of it that were really slippery. So the way he kind of leaned into that corner and just a little too much lean started pushing the front and he couldn't regain it and you know, just knifed. Yeah, we actually saw more crashes. You know, Malcolm Stewart went down. More crashes due to sliding out than the ruts, actually. Which, yeah, on Friday we thought this is going to be the stickiest, tackiest rut race. It was more of the hard pack slick spots that got guys when it counted. Yep. Yeah, and there was a lot of there was a few tacky spots, which it was really deceiving, right? You you hit a really good spot, and then all of a sudden there's a yeah, it's just so those are just tougher conditions to manage in general. But a lot of a couple of mistakes because of it from the guys. Yeah. You know, with the crashes Chase has had the last two years in a 450, he he has identified that it almost always comes back to losing traction when he doesn't expect it, which is a 450 thing that's, I guess, different from the 250. So you got a veteran like Anderson back there who didn't make that mistake. You were at the game for a long time. Are there just like tiny little notes in your head of like how to avoid those situations with years and years and years of racing those tracks on those bikes of like, this is a slick spot, this is a tacky spot. Is it, a co is it not a coincidence that the veteran dude didn't make that mistake um kind yes i mean i think there's a maturity level like um i think the best thing is just live you know that's why it's really important to keep the focus on yourself and mm -hmm. not anybody else just so you, you you're 100 there within yourself getting the most out of the track something if you start to tuck the front you can you can catch it versus kind of you know um losing the front or whatnot but I think a little bit of a maturity you kind of saw like Anderson, he was trying to push his way to the front, but he's also like, man, this is the, you know, I want to be a little bit sensitive. I got big picture in mind. Didn't really force the issue, kind of let it come to him. You know, some, sometimes you just got to let that, let that happen on a night. You just like, you know, if I, I know if I can push, I can push it more, but I'm going to put myself in a bad position. And so you just, those are just things that you process, but it, it takes time to develop that because it's just experience and time and, and, you know, uh, making it more of a habit. Um, it's hard in a race situation to, you know, uh, you know, when, when the wind's right there, you're going to go for it yes. and you're like, okay, I want the win, but, but then you're not thinking chance. So it's like, you've got to really have the big picture in mind all the time without being too far ahead of yourself, if that makes sense. Well, that's like a conscious thing, but I've got to imagine that you are subconsciously making all these minute calculations in your head all the way around the track all the time, almost instinctually in these conditions. Oh, yeah. It's all, it almost becomes instinct because you do it so much over time. It like right. it, that's that's you're absolutely right. Um, it's funny, too, because when we watch press day or practice, say it's like, who's going to jump this rhythm? Is this rhythm faster than the other? And then a lot of times the main event doesn't come down to that stuff. It comes down to these really little things like corners. You know, it's yeah. funny how that works. Yeah, there was uh, I know every, every time I, I, it's so deceiving from the, the practice, the rhythm lanes, oh man, this guy's going a second faster. And it's like the race starts and you're like, yep. it stuff didn't even matter. It's funny. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that track did have some options uh, in the rhythms, but I don't feel like in the end, those really decided things. It was more like managing the conditions and the ruts and the slickness. Limiting That's what they came down to. Yep. 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 Real quick, shout out Racer X. Subscribe to the magazine now and you will get this 17 ounce tumbler. Let me get the logos right. Not as good as the riders who do this all the time in the podium. How does this look? Look good? Let me let me check my own screen. Yeah, I'm doing it right. Yeah, so just want to give a shout out to the guys at Racer X. They really came up with a great package. Just trust the process and just can't thank them. Just can't thank them. You too can get a tumbler just like this. Go to racerxonline.com slash Weege. That's the subscribe link you want to use because then I will get credit for you signing up for the mag. We'll give you, uh, for $30, we'll give you this tumbler. We'll give you the magazine in the mail, and we'll give you access to read everything on the magazine, on the website, which means you could read it on your phone. So whichever way you like it, we'll give it to you. It's only $30 for the year, not a month, $30 for the year. And we'll give you this 17 ounce tumbler so I can have my Ryan Dungey RD coffee in the morning. A Cooper Webb did better. Uh, he got, look, he might not have finished on the podium if some of these guys didn't crash. But to me, he was at least closer. He was at least more competitive. Even if he had finished fourth, it would have been a better fourth. Yeah. Uh, did you think that? Yeah, definitely a step in the right direction. I mean, the, the things that I saw all day, he looked more comfortable in practice. Each practice got a little bit better. His time wasn't so far off, the the uh, the, the top guy yeah. in practice. 
and then you know in the heat race he came out pushing real hard and then same with the main event even even uh, ca he caught a couple good breaks in the main event but yet he was still he was there you know and, and that that shows me that they're that ktms they're making progress with the bike cooper's feeling a little bit better i mean on a track like that knowing the conditions and how um finicky the bike can be and that that track kind of brings out that type of dirt brings out the worst in the bike so for what I'm seeing, they're making good progress and it's a step in the right direction. He's back on the box. I mean, him and Marvin. So yeah, I think the boys were, uh, that was a, almost a win for them, like a win. Yeah, got to be a huge relief. You mentioned some of those conditions bring out the worst in the bike. When I was watching uh, press day with uh, Carmichael, actually, he was telling me how when it's sticky in spots, your margin for error is less. Because if you do something wrong and it's slippery, the bike will slide a little bit and you'll get away with it. But he's like, if you get it wrong here, that wheel is going to land exactly where it's not supposed to and you're done. Uh, so just explain that a little bit. He says when it's tacky, it's not forgiving. You, you There's no give when it goes wrong. It is. And, and mainly in the dang rhythms, because yeah. you got to be, you got to find your line, you pick your rut and go through that. And it's easy to get off balance. And so it's catchy. And I, you even saw guys in press day, they'd go into in the pocket or they'd over jump um, into a pocket and the, the whole bike would compress. Yeah. Well, then they'd leave the they'd leave the next takeoff, and then they go left or right. And so it's very very um, important to be precise, even more precise in those conditions. The traction is really good because you can go faster, you can push it harder. Mm -hmm. You also got to be a little bit more on top of it. Yeah. Uh, Alden Baker once told me that he could tell by your heart rates how much more traction there was because you could brake harder and gas harder because oh, yeah. you could be more aggressive on the bike. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, you're, you got more traction, the tires are hooking up more, you can manhandle that thing. And so your the physical output is more. So wow. you know, the heart rate, heart, heart rate goes up a bit. <laughs> that's, that's wild. And then Anderson said after the race, he's like, look, we can never find a track that's this gnarly to practice on. But he said, but at the same time, if we did ride a track like this every day, we probably wouldn't make it to the weekend. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's good points in the practice week to have those types of conditions to challenge you, but every single day, it's like, oh, that, that'll mentally wear a guy. The one thing I was really impressed with that, or surprised with was mm -hmm. the whoops. I thought the whoops would have been almost easy, but how oh. they broke down and the jumping line through them, it was like, it was, it was a struggle for a lot of the guys and they weren't very long, you know, they weren't so, yep. I mean, maybe 10 or 11 whoops. Yeah, I know what you mean. There was one point where it looked like it was going to become one of those where there was just a rut down the middle. And everybody's just going to ride that. And it almost like there weren't whoops, but it didn't actually work out that way in the long run. No, no. I think some guys struggled to jump because the rut was so deep. Yeah. And then guys opted to, to skip, which you got all the edges and the hard edges and the whoops, the way the track developed, it was a lot of guys going side to side. And that's what actually happened to Ferrandis. Um, yeah. He got sideways and went into Tomac there in the beginning. Yeah. Some of the crashes we saw on that triple were actually because guys were getting sideways in the whoops. Yeah. Then you get a pretty, that was a pretty big triple right after that. It was. Yeah. And and for the corner to be like right there at the landing, mm -hmm. a lot of guys were coming up short on that jump and messing them up, but it was tricky. That was that, that little section gave people a lot of fits. Uh, we'll talk two fifties here real quick. Um, everyone says you can't lose, you can't win the title in the first race, but you can lose it. To me, it looks like all the contenders, they were all working with that mantra, like, Let's yeah. not crash in the first race of the year. They all were, they all were good. Yeah. I don't think we've seen everyone's best yet. Yeah, I saw a little, um, the heat races were a little uh, interesting. I think the guys yeah. were getting the nerves out that first gate drop. Yep. But everybody rode pretty good in the main, I thought. The, even, um, you know, even they made a few mistakes. I think I saw Hampshire make a mistake, kind of regroup himself. But um, I was really, really impressed with Jet. I mean, obviously he won the race, but. He just rode smooth and effortless and hit his marks. But there's a lot of competition in that East Coast class. It's going to be fun to see how this thing plays out. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing with Jet, like he's young, right? And off the track, he's wild personality. And he's had some crashes. But at the same time, I feel like he's pretty mature as a racer. Yeah, there, you can go on YouTube right now and find like three gnarly crashes and think that's the way he is. But I don't feel like he really rides. He looks smooth most of the time, I think, when he rides. Yeah, I think I think his his style really benefits him because he almost looks yeah, it looks so effortless on the bike where he's not overriding the bike, overworking it. He doesn't try to scrub really hard where it puts himself in a bad position. If if anything, it's just a matter of limiting his the mistakes. But I think that's a benefit to the rider, how 
his posture's good. His, his style's really mellow. It's easy. His momentum's good. It's, he almost looks like he's going slow, but that's when guys are going fast. Yeah, it's like uh, when I first saw him ride, even in the amateur days, I was like, it's like the Kevin Windham thing. He's going to come off the track and people are going to say, dude, you, you need to go harder. You need to push harder because he doesn't look like he's on the limit. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm sure he is. Windham used to say, like, everybody tells me I don't look like I'm trying. Like, trust me, I am on the edge. It's weird how that works with some styles. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I uh, every I always felt like I'd, same thing. I'd come in like, man, I feel like I'm on there. Like, dude, you look in control. It's like, yeah, maybe, but it's just I, the way the ride. It's just the rider. It's but yeah, I, I like his style. I think it's good. And but yeah, I thought everybody and how close they were. It's not like those mm-hmm. top five were like so spread out either, right? So yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah, all all those five guys, I would think, would go into round two thinking, okay, I got this. This this could be mine. I'm I'm yeah. I'm where I want to be. Yeah. yeah. No, but that that's like the 450 class though. Like I we watched Anaheim one. Yeah. And if after that race, I think all the guys were like, man, I can do way better than that. But that's what everybody's doing. So mm-hmm. naturally, the nerves are gone. Everybody's more comfortable. Round two, they're gonna be even better. So it's like that whole the whole level raises and but yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. how I say the the third round to me is the real opener. That's how I always say the first two rounds, a lot of guesswork. I'm nervous or I'm trying not to overextend myself. I'm guessing on the bike by round three. Look, we're seeing a pattern. Tomac Anderson and if not for a crash here, Sexton, yeah, have kind of consistently been the best three guys. It hasn't changed that much, really. Yeah, yep. no, but then what? And then even Tomac, like the, that's the hard thing about nowadays. Like he he did go down. It wasn't his fault got a yeah. bad start but it's like he he worked his way up to what did he get i don't six even, yeah he did get up to six so yeah but only because you know sexton kenny went down it could have been oh, eighth easy right so yeah. it's like you're not going from you know what 15th to third or 15th yes. to second it's like that yes. you've got to be there in the beginning so but yeah there was one point where i'm like dude i think he's gonna get 11th you know what i mean i thought the same thing yeah. when he was like back in ninth and i that's why i asked how he didn't i didn't yeah. see with the, the finished result but i yeah. was like wow he, he's like only going to get to like ninth mm-hmm. and but that's the tough thing with so many competitive guys it's you know but yeah but it's like that for everybody too so it averages out over the whole span yeah yeah anderson's had a couple of things like that too so now they're back to back to yeah. even um okay are you uh you gonna be a papa at two here soon? I mean, it's just yeah, gonna happen. <laughs> so yeah, to, today is the due date. So okay, no, uh, no, nothing yet. So we're just kind of hanging low here at the house, waiting. <laughs> I just want to bring that up to thank you, like, to, yeah. to, to do this today. That's yeah, we're impressive. We're just chilling. We got a uh, we got swim this morning with little Harper girls. So we're okay. gonna take her to swim the lessons, and then uh, hope hope we have a baby here coming on the way here soon. Our, our bags packed for a couple nights at the hospital. They were they were packed before Minneapolis. Actually, okay. <laughs> we were, me and Lindsay are just thinking like he's gonna come early. He's he's gonna come sure. early, but he did. So all right. Well, it's cool you got to go because obviously you had a lot going on with the charitable stuff with RD Foundation. So that that's cool. Yep. Yeah, that's fun. Yep. It worked out. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I don't know. Next week you're probably gonna be busy, but we'll get you back on here once things settle down. Uh, thanks for the time and good to see you at a race. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to more here. Appreciate it.